All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, today we're looking at iLeg here. It's looking pretty okay. We have a, a early pre-market data that doesn't really tell us a whole lot. We had a big run up from about 286 all the way to 335. Uh, we're back down to about 312 right now. We might bounce off that 200 EMA and then start running. Uh, we've got ADN, which has on a bit, been on a pretty big tear most of today. We saw it uh, start out around $2.60, hitting a high of just over $3.60. Uh, for the majority of the day, it's been holding around this uh, three, I'd say 320 to 330 area. So we probably have some good support in that area. Uh, we've got Eton here. Um, early pre-market data looks pretty good. It starts to get a little shaky as we go forward, but uh, you never know. This could pop back up. Uh, DTSS, uh, it doesn't look too great right now. Kind of same story. Earlier on, it did look better. Uh, right now, it's not looking too great. Uh, we've got EVTL here. Kind of the same story. Again, we had a nice run up from $5 all the way to a high of $6.44. We're back down to about that $5 range. We might see another run out of this. Uh, kind of hard to tell, but... You never know, we might. Uh, we've got USEA here, uh, which we were thinking was going to be a recovery play here because it dropped from 580 down to about $4, but it just took another hefty drop from $4 down to 250 So we're going to see what this has uh, in store and QD with a little bit of a drop here. Uh, we do have iLeg here at 200 EMA, so we're going to go ahead and take a play at iLeg here at uh, about 305-ish. We're going to go for about 330 out of it. Um, and we're going to go for a 295 stop, I think. We'll give it 295. We're going to wait for that entry a little bit here. We might get a little bit cheaper. I'm going to say $3-ish. Because I think we're, we're able to get that, but I don't think we need to lower that uh, stop loss. Uh, we took a nice jump there to 315. Go ahead and secure some profits on iLeg. 20. That was huge. That was a massive, uh, very quick play. Um, I don't actually think I have my um, thing open, the trade tracker. So I just got to go ahead and open that up. One thing I didn't get ready today. We're up at 340, 345. Three forty-five. That's crazy stuff right there. I hate when this stuff doesn't have to reload all of the stuff on the tracker. Okay, wasn't too bad. We figured it out. It's eye leg. We got in about three hundred three. We're up at three forty now, so that's where we're gonna take some profits. Looking pretty good on uh, iLeg. We can come back to that, though. Um, ADN could bounce off this uh, VWAP line, so that's where we want to take our next entry. It's probably ADN here at VWAP, which is going to be probably about that 338 range. Uh, so 338. We're going to aim for 350 minimum. Uh, let's go for 355. We'll go for a 330. I'll give it a 320. Give it a 325. Stop. Now let's go 326. Very indecisive today. 326. Uh, so we're giving it, you know, a couple, couple extra cents here for a stop. Um, I would have put a red line on iLeg, but we went up so high so fast. Uh, I didn't even get a chance to change it. But uh, there we go. Yeah, we went all the way up to uh, 345 there. Uh, ADN's looking like it might curl up from here, but it might also come down a little bit more. And that's what we're kind of hoping for. Uh, Eton here fell uh, down to the 200 EMA as well. And, well, it's been working out so far today so we could try an econ play as well uh we're gonna go for probably i don't want to get in too high here that's about 305 so we'll go three we'll say 305 ish again we're gonna aim for 330 uh and then a 295 stop again um that gives us a little bit of room below that VWAP or 200 ema um to see if something's gonna happen dtss has no volume let's close that out right now um, USEA really not doing a whole lot. We could see uh, QD heading back up to that $2 range. Um, I, I think that QD is another one, so I'm going to go ahead and type uh, QD190. Uh, we might get a little lower than 190, but we're going to aim for that $2 mark and then a 185 stop. So we're just going to give it that $0.05. Cents. Um, and that does bring us below that 200 EMA. Not by much, but probably enough. So that's QD. We're at 196 already. Wow, 190, 198 or 197, just like that. 
Uh, we should take some profits off VWAP there. Taking some profits off VWAP on QD197. Just for people who aren't uh, watching the charts, I guess I have to specify the actual price. Um, let's see what else. We've got Eton at uh, 340 right now. Or sorry, that's uh, ADN. We've got Eton at 307, so we're getting pretty close to that entry point. You could jump in at 307 if you want to. Definitely not a, a bad price to get in at 306. Also fantastic. You can take that. Um, we've got ADN at uh, 345, so we're not doing too bad. We have started to move up. We did take a little bit of a dip uh, past that um, uh, VWAP line, but we are moving up now, so ADN's looking all right as we uh, speak. Not too bad, anyway. Uh, ILEG went all the way up to $4 there. Hopefully you secured some more profits. No, no, it hit four. Yeah, it's at four. Well, it's not at four, but it was at four. I like it four. Hopefully, I'll take some more profits at that. Um, unless you're kind of just sitting there in disbelief that we actually hit four dollars on that. Uh, we definitely saw lots of momentum. Giant wicks, though, so we're going to see some selling pressure kicking up off that. ADN still kind of struggling, but we did almost hit that 350 mark. Uh, Eton. Falling down a little bit to 304. EVTL not really doing a whole lot. USCA not doing anything. QD with a nasty drop. So it's a good thing we took some profits because we did actually hit stop on the remainder. Uh, QD hit stop on remainder. Could be another opportunity to buy in, but I kind of want to see if it can hold. I'm going to leave that line there as reference, actually. Um, we're going to leave that be for now. I like still 350, ADN coming back down to VWAP right now, Eton with a nice spike up to 318. Um, we're not quite at PT, but we can start to look at taking some profits here. Take some profits, Eton 318-ish. I probably could get around that 320 mark, I think I hit 319 there, um, but definitely all right profits. Looks like it's going to come back down a little bit. Um, ADN still struggling. I leg is definitely coming down now. So if you are holding on to anything or anything left, you might want to cut it. We're probably going to hit at least that 330 area at some point here. Uh, we do have a strong support in this area with BWAP and a support line. Um, Eton back up a little bit. EVTL looks like it wants to make a move up. Um, the dramatic drop on that VWAP line is not very uh, telling of anything good. Let's see if QD can hold at this last support line. Um, if it doesn't, it's got a long ways that can drop, so we got to be careful with this one. Uh, Eton at 320. ADN starting to move up here. We're at 350 from our entry at 338, so we're pretty close. We just hit PT there. PT, ADN, taking some profits here. Looks like ADN just went the, the wrong way there, all the way back down. Uh, hopefully he secured some profits at PT. Uh, I like back up to 370. It's still looking so strong. This this thing might actually just keep going. It's one of those. Um, QD, this is the last support line. If we break through, we probably won't be doing anything else with this. Looks like it's struggling. We might see a recovery off this. ADN with a nasty, nasty drop. This could be another potential buy-in opportunity. Um, we are still negative on that MACD. It was a sharp drop. I'm going to leave it for a minute. Um, I like is back up. We have... Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to jump in on ADN again here. ADN, um, 330. We're going to go for 350. Uh, and then a 320. We're going to give it a fairly tight stop, though. Yeah, we don't want to give it too tight, though. I think we're just going to go 320. We'll give it that 10 cents, so that brings us below both support lines. Um, what do we got here? We have to. We kind of want to get below 319. So I kind of want to wait a minute and see if we can get lower than 330. Um, if we could get like 325, that would be fantastic, because then we could do a 315 stop, and that gives us some room there. 
Uh, we did see a drop down to 329, not quite where we want just yet. Um, I leg going back up. I think I'm actually just going to jump back in on uh, I leg. Um, three, this is risky. So we're going to be using a tight stop on it. So 370 entry, we're going to be going for a uh, $4 PT and then a three, just a 360 stop out. So if it does end up coming back down a little bit, we are going to stop out on it, but you know what? We're already at 380 on it. Back down to 370 all over the place. All over the place. Back up to 380 again. Looking pretty strong here. Uh, Eton's not doing a whole lot. We have a complete breakdown on QD here. Um, ADN still hasn't quite gotten where we want to be. But uh, I like here is looking pretty good. 385, not a bad place to take props. Got about 15 cents of profit at 385. Could secure some if you're a little worried about it. No, I didn't send the ADN alert because I wasn't quite ready to. I'm not ready to jump in on it. We weren't. We didn't get close enough to where I want to be yet. I kind of want to see a 325 uh, entry point. So right where this red line is, that's kind of where I want to see for the entry. Uh, and I'm sure we'll get it. Uh, just not right this second. 386, 390. We can start to take profit here. There were about 20 cents in profit on uh, I leg. Taking some profit on eye leg around 390-ish. Okay. Still looking pretty good there. Uh, still hoping ADN drops a little bit more. We need to get that stop below that 200 EMA, and I really don't want to risk anything extra. I do think this is going to bounce pretty soon, though, so I think we actually might be forced into an entry here. ADN, 330, go for 350, and then a 3. Give it a 317 stop. We're going to give it a little bit more room. Just so we have a tiny bit of breathing room here, but it does look like it's going to start to move up, so we're... Uh, might be lucky here. Might have jumped in uh, right at the cost of when it starts to move up. That would be uh, that would be good news for us. Hopefully, it doesn't actually come down uh, all the way to three seventeen here. Well, we'll see. We have um, I leg here hitting a high of three ninety three. Still hoping for that four dollar mark eventually here. QD continues to drop. USEA. Has yet to really move at all. I think that offering really screwed it. Uh, we got EBTL still dropping. Uh, Eton not really doing a whole lot here. Uh, we saw a high there, 320 on Eton. It hasn't really moved up much higher since then. We've got uh, ADN starting to make its move. Looks like it's hit its bottom and wanting to uh, start to move back up now, which is definitely a good sign for us. Uh, 350 is not too far away. We do have a resistance to break through. We probably have another resistance somewhere along the lines of, uh, I don't know, like 345 area. Might see some resistance here, 342. High leg looks like it's going to be coming back down, so hopefully you're not holding on to too much of it um, at this time. But we'll see. We'll see how far this pullback comes down. Uh, what else on the scanner? We've got Skyx popping up we could take a look at. I don't see much for opportunity there. We've got a dill. I feel like a dill's always popping up on the scanner. And it's never really looking great, but it's always there. Uh, RYTM we had open earlier. It's looking okay. The price range is really slim on that, so we don't really care for it on DX. Yeah, that's a lot of red candles. I'm not really not really digging that either. Uh we've got Goss. Uh TBLT, maybe. Goss, I don't really like that range. TBLT is looking okay. Yep. Yeah. What's the range here? We're playing from 265 to 276. Yeah, that's a pretty slim range um, for the entire movement. We can keep it open for now and see. Might might do something. 
QD could be uh, reversing here, but it could also just be a dead cat bounce. So we're not going to play that until we break back above this uh, 182 area. <clears throat> I think we could probably safely close down uh, USEA. I don't think it's going to be doing anything. We've got SWV uh, swivel popping up. Uh, we're going for a range of 245 to 279. So range isn't that bad on this one. Um, however, we're seeing a complete lack of volume and price action right now, which isn't really telling us a whole lot. Eye legs at 392. Looks like that pullback was very minor. Um, ADN looks like it is breaking down a little bit more. Hopefully that stop holds us. Eton's back up around that 320 range. Uh, we've got Swivel not doing anything. QD does break back above that range. We could end up playing this. I feel like this could be a bad idea, but I also feel like I'm going to do it anyway. So we're going to go QD. Uh, we're going to try for that. It's just that 180. Oh, 180 entry. Uh, we're going to go for a 190 ET and then a 176 stop loss. We don't really, honestly, even 176 is quite a bit of room. We don't need that much room. We'll see. We'll see. Very risky play. I'm not really too confident in this one, to be honest. I feel like it's already made a big move up, and it's probably going to hit a consolidation and come back down. I think this is past the dead cat bounce point. I think it's just it came up too much for it to be that. But I do think that jumping in now is a pretty high risk move. Eton still 318. We saw a little bit of recovery on ADN here. We're still hoping we eventually we break positive on this uh, uh, MACD here. I like hits just below that uh, $4 mark. Let's see if anything else. We have lots of stuff that's like slightly green. I'm trying to look for things that look familiar um, that might be good. The only thing I see is CLNN. We could take a look at that. Uh, range is okay on it. Um, price action's decent. We're seeing some gaps, though. I don't really like seeing that. I think we're just going to skip out on that for now. We'll just, uh, we'll come back if things are looking bad and we're getting desperate. Right now, it's kind of sit and wait for a couple things. We've got ILEG, we're hoping to hit $4 on. We've got uh, ADN, we're hoping to see anything above our entry, but we're basically just sitting at entry point. Uh, we've got ETON, which has moved up quite a bit. We just saw that 320 range again. We hit 321. We I think we were hoping for about 330 on that. We still have a little bit of a runner in there. Uh, yeah, we were aiming for 330 on that. So hopefully uh, we do see that. Come on, I like make that push to four again. All right. I like looking okay here. Three ninety looks like it wants to make that push to four dollars. Starting to see a MACD turn around. Volume still looking good. 395. I'd like to say I would cut it at four dollars, but I haven't really decided yet. We'll have to see when we get there. You only have a tiny bit left in I like I don't have too much either. That's why I'm not really concerned about stopping it at four dollars. If we could get higher, that would be great. Um, slow day. It's been a pretty productive Monday. Although honestly, for whatever reason, I can't remember if Mondays are good or bad. Usually, I I think it's kind of a toss up. Fridays are usually slow. It is being very inconsistent. Like the first five minutes there, we had a lot going on. Um, now we still have a little bit going on, but it's not, nothing's really moving. Yes, it's a chop fest. Oh, dude, there's so much money in here, though. You just have to be on the right side of it, though. 
Yeah, a long time ago, somebody actually did a graph and it showed that I think Wednesday is the most profitable day for me, even though I used to think that Wednesday was like the worst day. And I think it was probably just like an extra stressful kind of day. But yeah, it, uh, Wednesdays were actually the most profitable. I don't know if that's changed since we hit a bear market, though. Yeah. Tuesday's the worst day. Yeah, I, it, I think there's definitely a worst day of the month. Usually if you end up with like the end of the month on a Friday, um, then it's bad. I'm not sure about in this case, probably in this case too, since the last, uh, the last day that we can trade of the month is going to be the Friday. Adian finally making a move up. Yeah, we're finally seeing a little bit of profit here, almost at 340. Hold on, I don't have a... It's not really something I promote doing, but my hands aren't on the keyboard and mouse because I'm putting on Afterbite because... Just a meal on wheels when I go for a walk. Should have taken it. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, QD is still kind of hanging around that 180 mark. Um, it is starting to look like it's breaking down a little bit. This could just be a pullback. This is what I was kind of afraid of. We did see a little bit of profit there, but um, basically we were thinking this is, you know, breaking above this uh, 180 mark was a good sign, and it was a good sign. However, it did already have a big run, so a pullback was definitely going to happen. It was just a matter of, well, we hit our price target before that happens, and uh, so far, no. Um, now we're just waiting to see if it stops us out, basically. I like with a little bit of a breakdown yet. Yeah. I'd be I'd be happy to see this come back down to VWAP and then start holding there so we could take another play on it. I still hope we hit that four dollar mark though. Um, Eton is definitely playable within this like three hundred six to three twenty area. It's kind of slim profits. You're looking at about a fifteen cent profit uh, on that, which isn't isn't terrible. That's about four percent or four and a half percent. Um, so it's definitely doable, but I'm not, I'm not really, I don't want to sit here and scalp if I don't have to. Uh, QD's back down. Something just popped up on my Steam. Somebody I know is playing Sexy Airlines or something. Interesting. Sexy Space Airlines, I think that's what it said. Not you. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you got time for that and trading at the same time, you must be getting better at trading. Haven't taken a trade today? You can turn it offline. You can go on Steam and you can disconnect your chat. Um, I mean, people can still go on your, your page and look at the, uh, the quote-unquote badges you have or whatever. Stardew Valley, no kidding. Yeah, it it's the same thing on League. People will call you out like instantly. Like I've got like thirteen or fourteen thousand hours on my main accounts on League. So the second I start being someone, they're all like, "Oh, you're you're a nerd. You sit here and you play this all day. Your heart stuck." Blah blah blah. You know, fourteen thousand hours. Like yeah, it's a lot of time. I know. I'm the one who sat there for 14,000 hours. What for? Only when you're Quinn, though. I hate Valorant. I don't know. I could. I, I mean, I might try it again at some point, but I just couldn't get into Valorant. I'm, I'm hoping that um, Overwatch 2 ends up being good. Right now, just basically League. Um, PUBG, we just started up PUBG again. It looks like we did touch our stop there on QD, but it is moving back up. So if you didn't stop out for whatever reason, maybe you gave it a 175 stop. It looks like it's going to be recovering here. ADN, yeah, it's really... Yeah. So ADN is going to be one of these stocks that if we cut early, I can guarantee it's going to go into profit. And I can almost guarantee if we don't cut early, it's going to go into stop. 
So pick your poison. You can either write it into stop, or you can cut early and watch it go into profit. I, I just feel like... Yeah, it's just one of those ones. I know it's one of those ones. We get like one of these every day that just doesn't do anything, and then eventually we end up making profit on it if we hold long enough. On the last one for very small profit, yeah. Yeah, ADN, uh, we should have taken profit at that around that 340 area, but uh, it wasn't enough to really make it worth it. I Lake's not really doing much either. We've got Eton sitting here not doing much. Uh, EVTL still dropping. Swivel, yeah, no, I don't like that. And then we have QD here sitting here looking decent. Uh, yeah, if he didn't stop out, it's definitely looking much better now other than that top end starting to close in. You do have to break through that uh, 200 EMA and then maybe... I mean, you, you could break through that VWAP as well, eventually, but I don't think it's happening right this second. They just won the CSGO finals. 405 live viewers, or 405,000 live viewers, that's like nothing. Have you seen the league championships? There's like millions of people watching it. T that went... Or a TA, oh, TA and H went. Let's take a look at that. TA and H. Oh. oh, yeah, look at that. It's it's definitely sub dollar, but it's looking pretty good. I would say if we can get this back down to VWAP, there's a good chance I'll probably take a play on that. CSGO, yeah. CSGO is one of those like classic games where some people really like it and others just don't. I'm one of those people that also really don't like that game. I just don't like CSGO. I legs up at four dollars. Look at that. Four thirteen. That's the most exciting thing today. Besides the first time it hit four dollars. That's pretty exciting. I'm gonna go ahead and uh I'm gonna cut some more. I'm gonna leave a tiny tiny bit left, but I'm gonna cut some more here. I don't know why I'm leaving a tiny bit in there. Hopefully we hit like seven dollars. ADN's going too. Look at that. Look at that random spike. Back up to 337. Oh, we're seeing this green candle. We're picking up momentum. We're crossing that zero line on MACD. We're looking a little bit bullish here. Can it make a push above VWAP? Ah, uh, come on. You can do it. <laughs> There's Lizard, and it's gone. Sounds like uh, Africa. There's always like some random bug in your room. You're like, oh my god, there's a giant bug in here. Then you look away and it's gone. It's like, oh, that's nice. I'm just going to get eaten alive in my sleep. Yeah, but New York City doesn't have mosquitoes the size of bats. The, the the good thing about the mosquitoes in Africa is at least they're so big that you can actually see them coming. Although if one happens to get you, you basically just need a blood transfusion because you're just not going to have enough left. Come on, ADN. The heating systems in some buildings. Oh, no. Oh, God. I would have uh, screens on all the vents. There we go, 340. We're breaking out a little bit. Well, weird. I think my alerts got moved. That's okay. I found them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of profit here at 340. ABM 340 and taking profit on... I don't think I said uh, to take profit on I like, but for 13-ish. Um, well, I said it here, but I didn't say it on the alerts, and I should have. Um, but yeah, definitely take some profit on, uh, on ILEG for sure anyway. I mean, ADN kind of still questionable at 10 cents profit, but you take what you can get. If you're still holding on to uh, 
uh, QD here. I'd start to take profits at this 185 mark. There's going to be resistance before you hit that uh, 200 EMA and you might not get past it. Uh, 200 sellers coming in at this price point. So oh, we got lots of buyers popping up out of nowhere though. We're getting a little bit of a bullish push here. This movie up because he cut. Yeah, all I have is a runner in um, ADN. I have a small, small amount in ILEG left, and then I have a little bit of QD. Nothing fantastic, though. Oh, now the person's playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. I have no idea who this person is. Ricky Guterres or whatever. For right now, a small amount is like a thousand shares. Uh, is he a large cap trader? I can't really remember. So yeah, a small amount's actually a fairly small amount, only like two thousand dollars for the HQ. Headquarters. We did break through. He's got a little bit more profit on H or uh, QD there, not HQ. And then he got me saying HQ. I legs at four twenty here. Uh, I was gonna say it four twenty Yolo blaze it, but I'm just I'm from that era. Oh, gotcha. That's cool. Is it like in your area or do you have to go somewhere for it? I 100% want to go and buy an island and like run courses off the island. That's awesome. It is a happy 420. Especially since we originally played this at like $3 or $3.30, something like that. Just this table on trading view. I feel like level 2 kind of models everything up a little too much. Uh, we got T or T and H here looking like it might come down to VWAP. Yeah, ADN might try it again. It it needs to break through and hold. If it can break through and hold, we might actually start seeing some actual profits on this, which would kind of be nice. Uh, QD back down a little bit. Uh, it's the Dom. So, uh, I need to look at my stream somewhere so I can see what you guys see. Okay, so you guys can see up to this light bulb here. Um, if you go like one, two, three, four down from the light bulb, it's called Dom and you can open it up and it's this thing here on the side. The chat's kind of in the way, so I can only show so far down on it. Yeah. Some people call it the order book, some people call it the Dom, some people call it the tape. It's got a lot of different names. Uh, ADN's making that push up to 340 again, so if you didn't secure profits the first, second, or third time, you have a fourth opportunity. If you go to a brokerage one, it's a little more complicated. Um, because they usually don't just, like, this is just showing you the last order prices on both sides, so the bid and ask. Um, but if you go onto a, um, like a brokerage one, it'll usually show you all of the different orders coming in at all the different, uh, price points. And it kind of, it's just too much to look at. All right, we're starting to see some movement on ADN here. He trades TQQQ. Uh, I'm hoping he doesn't do that live, because that would be really annoying to say. I feel like Q is one of the hardest letters to pronounce, not pronounce, but... Is that the word? Pronounce? To say it, like, vocalize? I don't know what the word is. But that's what I mean. To vocalize that letter takes a lot of actual effort. Uh, I'm going to close down EVTL. I don't think we're going to be playing that. Come on, ADN. 
I think Edian might actually hold above VWAP this time, which is good, but I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a push. Well, no, I, and it's yes, it's a ticker, but to like actually say the word TQQQ, it takes a lot of work. I'm trying to think of the word to like say that I'm vocalizing that ticker. It's not pronouncing it because you're just saying, well, maybe it's pronouncing it, but it's just letters. TQQQ. Yeah, they both work. There's like an actual word, though. I'm pretty sure it's like an actual word for exactly what I'm trying to say. Um, I just can't think of it right now. Really annoys me when that happens. Uh, we have eye leg here. It looks like it did uh, build up some support here at 408. Looking to make another move. I am hesitant on opening another trade at this point. But uh, we still have a little bit of a runner, so. QD of 187. Might oh it hit uh one one nine eight or one eight nine, must be dyslexic or something. Uh, we're just about that one ninety PT. So if you did happen to hold through it, uh, it's definitely paying off. Articulate, no, I don't think articulates the word. Articulate like, maybe articulates the right word. I'm trying to think, and it's it's just not happening right now. You know, like, sometimes you, like, enunciate. That's probably the better word for it. Playing, like, Mad Libs over here or something. Also not the right game, but Mad Libs is actually a lot of fun. Yeah, I was just looking at eye legs almost at 430 here. I I'm not really quite ready to take some more profits on eye leg yet. I think I kind of want to hit, like, 450 on it. It's kind of a ways up, but... We've seen the stock do some crazy stuff, so it's not completely out of the books. Let's just go ahead and say we're going to take some profits on... Taking some profits on... QD here, 189. Okay, yeah, I think that's probably uh, a decent place to take some profits. It's not like massive profits by any means, but I mean, like, I, I really don't know exactly what to expect out of that one. How are my dogs? They're good. They're good. Um, Our Belgian Malinois is uh, very snorty, so I think we have to take him to the vet and see if he's got some, uh, like, nose issues or anything. only when he looks up yeah i know he definitely has allergies i have allergies too it's funny when i take him out in the morning for a pee uh we both just stand there sneezing for like three minutes it's pretty feeble looking but uh he definitely does have allergies um when they when they get really bad i give him some benadryl adian finally starting to break down here yeah it might be could be a bounce we could still see it we're having a lot of buyers popping up at uh that uh, 338 level. I like back down a little bit. QD still at 189 here. Not really breaking to that 190 zone yet. I like slowly breaking down here. We have, uh, why is uh, Green Steps not on for this one? There we go. There we go. We're seeing some crocodiles. Big croc and then little croc. And it's a nasty drop from 3,900 all the way down to yeah, a six-point drop. Even more there. Got an eight-point drop. ADN with a nice recovery. Do my friends ever get jealous? Um, No. Um, I'm always very open to teaching them how to trade. I think at some point, wow, that was, a, that was a good recovery and then a nasty drop on ADN. I think at some point, almost all of them have asked to learn how to trade. So I teach them a little bit and then they quickly get overwhelmed and not want to do it. Which is, which is fine. But, uh, 
they do often uh, make re remarks when I'm trading in the morning. I'm like, ah, oh, man, it was so slow today. I only made like $3,000. And they're like, yeah, in an hour, right? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, we make like 30 bucks an hour. But uh, besides that, no, they're not, uh, I wouldn't say that they're jealous or anything. Like, I usually pay for everything when we go out and stuff, because, I mean, like, I just, I have the money, so why not? Uh, QD finally broke that 190 marker, 192, 193 area, 194. Have they ever told me to get a real job back when I wasn't a profitable trader and I was almost like $200,000 in debt and still trying to day trade? Yeah, they were like, yeah, you should probably quit. Um, but I have this problem where when people tell me to quit, I usually just try to do it even harder. So the more people telling me to quit just pushed me to do it even more until I was finally like, ha, in your face. Yeah, I did have two jobs, but I was using those two jobs to fund my account and pay down my loans. So those jobs were basically just me working my ass off to continue trading. Like I could have easily just claimed bankruptcy and then just went back to a normal life. But uh, I did not. QD at 196, yeah. I still have a little bit left in here. I think I might take it out soon. I didn't actually expect us to get this high on it. Uh, we did hit 197 there. Uh, we're back at basically... Yeah, we're, we're up at the high here. Yeah, I'm going to take out the rest here. Taking out the rest of QD here. Whoop, here. 196. I think I slept on my wrist weird or something. I'm just getting old. My wrist hurts. Uh, how did I manage to day trade and work my jobs? Well, the first piece of advice I have is legally a coffee shop can serve you a coffee with three espresso shots in it. So that's a good piece of information to know. Um, the other part, hang on, I gotta take profits here. Keep saying I'm taking profits and then I don't, so I'm taking it here. Um, the other thing is, depending on your time zone, you might have better luck with it, or man, I should have kept holding. Uh, you might have better luck with day trading and having jobs. Like for me, the market opens at 6.30 in the morning. And if I'm done trading by 7.30, that leaves me time to get to work. If I have like an 8 o'clock start, like an 8 to 4 or something. And then I would do like like a 5 to, I think I was doing 5 to 9 somewhere else. So I was like, you know, basically busy all day. Um, and then also I was in college at the time as well. So I still had to find time to study. So I was literally getting like maybe four hours of sleep. Although I wasn't really focusing too hard on school at the time, so my grades were not the best. And I had to have, and that's true, I, I still found time to play League sometimes. Looking back at it, I'm like, yeah, this is why I had a, like a major addiction to uh, caffeine. 204. 205, Jesus. I think I, I ruined my caffeine tolerance level. Is, it's just too high. Like, I can sit here and drink coffee all day long, like really strong coffee, and not really feel it. But if I don't have any caffeine, I just, I'm, I'm grumpy. I'm so grumpy. I need caffeine. Although I have to say, I haven't had an energy drink in like a year or something. And I just had one the other day. And oh my God, it was like, I can only equate it to like if you had quit smoking and haven't had a smoke in like 10 years and you finally had one, you're like, ah, that's the good stuff. Like, you know, it's bad for you, but it feels so good. Come on, I like, I like looks like it's ready to go again. If you, if we could get it at 408, I think this could be a really good trade opportunity. Uh, we just have to watch that MACD doesn't cross at zero line when it comes back down. Super stressed being down? Yeah, I was super stressed being down because, like, there was so much going on at the time. Like, I didn't take out a loan. When, when I went to the bank and I asked for a loan and they said, what is this for? I said, it's for my PhD. And then I immediately took that loan and threw it in my brokerage account. I was like, let's YOLO this and see if I can make more money. So... It's going to be, it would have been really hard to explain to the government or to the bank that I, I use their money, not for school. I'm not actually sure if that's illegal or not. 
Did I tell my parents when I was down that much? Um, no. No, I didn't. Yeah, it's just, you shit like, it. it's hard, right? Because, like, technically speaking, I was in school and I was getting my PhD, but I wasn't using the loan for that. I was working, I used the loan for trading and I was working two jobs to pay for tuition and pay off the loan and just kind of keep myself afloat. So it was a really not great situation. And I was also gambling on the weekends, but I was actually good at that at the time. So that was actually making me some money. What was the PhD in? My first one was, uh, and I was trying to become like an actual doctor so I could be an anesthesiologist. Exactly. Yeah, Dr. Adrian, yeah. I could definitely be a doctor. I spent enough time in school. I've got like four bachelor's degrees. I just like kept changing my mind. I was like, yeah, you know what? I don't like this. I don't like that. Like I have a bachelor's in psychology. And I was like, yeah, I just, I don't care enough about people's problems. And if I feel like I'm not going to go ahead and sit there and talk to people and pretend to care, you know, if I don't care, it's just not going to happen. Yes, you do need a master's before a PhD. Yeah. Med school, yeah. Alright, so it looks like for eye leg, we just kind of have to jump in if we're going to do it. So maybe if we can get in eye leg, about 410. We're going to go for 450 uh, and then a 4. Let's give it a 390 stop. That's a big stop, but I think we actually kind of need that room. We'll decide if we need to cut earlier. Whoa, do not go to date range. He dropped out of your PhD too? It's, it's, a, you know, it's, it is what it is, right? I mean, it's not for everybody. I know, um, my fiance's family was very, very upset with me because I was definitely overworking myself and not actually really attaining much at the time. Like I was doing so much, but getting almost nowhere doing it. Not 14, 35, 4. Um, but you know, in the end, I guess it worked out, but they're very old school. So exactly. If you don't have the passion, that's the big thing, right? Like I've always been like, if I'm going to try something because I, I think I might like it. And then I get to a certain point and I, I'm like, you know what? I don't think I like this. So I, I'm just going to bail on it. Um, and to some people that's like, especially like really traditional people, they're like, no, get a job pay buy a house pay for the house blah 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 it's like but if i don't like my job then i'm you know the a job is a big part for part of your life right if you're at your job eight hours a day which is like a minimum nowadays some some jobs require you to be there 10 hours a day or 12 hours a day that's a big portion of your life you're you're using to do stuff you don't like doing so you, you might as well be happy with what you're doing they're happy with me now. Actually, I would I would I would beg to differ. I would say that they're probably still not happy with my choices because they're just so traditional that they don't understand that this is an actual profession. Uh I don't think it's I mean like I there's a good possibility it does come down to 410. I maybe 412. I would I would think 412. 410 is pretty close, so I mean like I don't know, if I could hit 412, I'd be happy with it. Do they know I make a lot? Yeah, they do. Yeah, exactly. I think time time is money. Time is really, really important, which is why I was so drawn to day trading, because you can do it one hour a day and just be done. Uh, once you're good at it, of course, you still have to take time to learn everything and to get good at it. And even then, they still it's still more than like an hour, right? It still takes a couple hours a day, but... To be able to say that I'm done working at like 10 in the morning when people are generally just getting up is pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, I could retire now if I want to. Um, although with the, the amount of taxes and stuff, I don't think it's honestly worth it. I think uh, especially because I enjoy doing this, I'd definitely keep doing it. Um, they Because... Because I don't bring home a paycheck, to them, this is risky business. And yeah, it is risky business, but you don't get paid good money to not do risky things. That's just not how life works. You have to take the risk if you want to make the money. 
Um, otherwise, you know, like they would be more happy with me be being paid thirty dollars an hour at some job than they would me making three hundred thousand dollars doing this. You know, exactly. They would rather have guaranteed money. And no, and, and by a regular trader's means, I am actually playing within the rules of normal day traders, which is using 1% of your account, right? Because I, I even do less than that. You know, like theoretically at this point, if I had everything in my bank account, I'd probably have millions in the bank, but I'm only starting each month with $500. So that's really like 1% of my quote unquote portfolio, right? Or less, way less than that. So I'm playing by the rules. I'm not risking a whole lot. Worst case, I have a bad month and I lose, what, 500 bucks? It's, it's nothing. So the risk is pretty much null. Other day traders that, you know, they, they maintain like $40,000 in their account all the time to trade like that. A little more risk. Still, I wouldn't even consider that super risky, though. You have a bad month. You could have five bad months. I could have like 100 bad months. I could be not making money for five years and still be fine. No, it's not a cash cash margin. Exactly. And I've tried to explain that to them that I have like a $30 an hour paycheck for years in the bank account. They're still like, they still, I don't know, they're weird. They're super weird. And like I was just telling them because they just finished paying off their house. And I was like, you guys have a house worth $2 million right now. Go get a home equity loan. For 80% of the value of your house, throw it in the S&P 500 or some high yield dividend stock and you can both retire and you'll have like $150,000 a year to live off of, which is more than enough if you don't have any bills and they have no bills. So Adian's finally going again. Yeah, we're starting to see a little bit here. It's taking its sweet time. This better be a good win. Like we better see $4 out of this. We did see a little bit there. We saw that on 416 on um I like I got impatient. I got 425 as an entry. And the knife. <laughs> QD's got a big spike. Yeah, 211. Wow, look at that. Went back down to $1.98, then right back up to 213. Crazy. Oh, I wasn't uh, watching the YouTube chat. I think this is too high to jump into right this second, but we could wait for a pullback on it. <clears throat> um, well, my parents aren't really around. But I would say that they'd probably be pretty traditional as well. Um, they're not... They weren't... Well... My dad was a risky person. My mom was not. 215. Look at this. 218. Crazy. Crazy movement from like all the way down here. Like we saw this hit $1.73. And it's all the way to 219. From 440 to 5. No resistance on iLeg. Is that what we're talking about here? Yeah. Holy crap, man. I didn't even see that earlier. I neglected to take a look at the uh, larger time frame on this. That was quite the drop. Yeah, there's 410. Let's hopefully we see some movement up. Eton's moving. Yeah, Eton is moving a little bit here. Nothing fantastic still out of the stock. In fact, it looked like it was breaking down here for a while below that 200 EMA, but it has come back up a, a little bit here, so that's good. I still don't think Eton's super playable right now. I think QD is probably one of the best bets, and then I Lake is also something that I feel like could definitely uh, take another move up. You hate it when I'm right? Wait, what was I right about? I don't even know what I was right about. I do a lot of talking. Unless it makes you money, yeah. I have those moments too where I'm right. And I don't even...
take the trades. I'm like, oh yeah, this is totally going to happen. And then I don't do it. And then it does what I thought it was going to do. I'm like, God, like, why don't I listen to myself sometimes? Yeah, come down to 410 for an entry. Yeah, I, I also didn't listen to myself on that. I got in pretty high. So. But you know what? It's It broke down a little bit. It's negative on that MACD, so that could be a, a definite uh, problem here. We'll have to see. The bottom band doesn't look like it's opening up at all yet, so that's good news. I think we got some bag holders here at this uh, like 345 level because we keep seeing big drops on it. Let's see. Come on, I leg. 314, 315. Let's see a recovery at least back up to 440. I'm back up to 440. I don't think it's hit 440 yet. No, it definitely hasn't hit 440 yet. AD and bounces off that support line once again. Ah, oh, thanks, man. QD's up way too high for my liking. I would definitely need this to come down a little bit before I make a playoff, but I think I'm... I'd be okay getting it at 195, but I really don't think we're going to see that. And if we do see it, it's going to look really unhealthy in the next, like I would need to take in the next five minutes. And if we saw this kind of drop in the next minute or two, it would not be uh, something I'd want to take a play on. I said that and immediately saw a red candle start to dark down. Come on, I leg. Move back up. Come on, I leg. Oh, this might be breaking breaking down. MACD's not pointed down, so that's good. Bond band isn't really opening up. I could change pretty quick though for both of those indicators. I'm not really seeing much in price action. I'm seeing a couple bearish candles though. Bullish ones are red, so I have more selling pressure there, but uh I'll give this one about a 50-50 chance we actually start to move back up versus just taking a drop. Yeah, I'm not really liking the way that uh eye legs looking right now. I think I'm gonna cut it. Yeah. Cutting, eye leg, not. All right. Well, I didn't lose a whole lot. We thought, oh my god, I should have waited. Should have. I could have made at least almost a break even at this point if I had just waited. God damn it, every time. Not every time. Actually, very rare when that happens to me, but I still don't like it. Man, I cannot believe. That's okay, I, I sold out at 413, so it's not actually that bad, but... It looks like I could have waited and almost gotten a break even. Like, if I was still in it now, I'd probably still be holding, because this is looking a little bit better. We saw a nice recovery there, lots of buying pressure kicking up. It was kind of a boring day. It definitely was. We didn't take... I don't think we took a lot of trades. Uh, one. No, we didn't take a lot of trades. We took, like, maybe eight. Let's go to the trade summary. Yep, eight trades. Yeah, we got about three minutes left. We could go through this. Whoa. This is... I don't want this this big. This is huge. There we go. Um, yep, yeah, so we took eight trades today. We had a 32% on iLeg, which is fantastic. 13% uh, on iLeg, another good one. We had 10% on QD. That was technically supposed to be a loss, but my, uh, my stop loss was actually sent lower than I thought it was, so it worked out fine. 
Um, Eye Lake was our first loss of the day at 2%, so not as bad as it could have been if I had sold like maybe 10 seconds earlier, it would have been a 3% loss. Yeah, definitely better safe than sorry. If, you, if you're not feeling it on a day, just definitely don't trade. Um, we made another $3,365 today, bringing our total up to $12,000 for the month. Uh, that brings us up to a 67% win rate. We are slowly eking that win rate back up to that 70% mark, which is good to see because I uh, really didn't like seeing it uh, close to that 50% mark, even though, you know, that's still profitable. It's still uh, kind of an issue for me. I, I, I would much rather have it up higher, obviously. Um, but besides that, yeah, I don't think we're going to be taking any more plays on anything. Uh, ADN, if you're still holding it, I still think ADN is going to be a winner eventually here. It's still looking good. We're seeing a, a solid support line that's holding on. I'd, see if, I'd say if it broke down from here, uh, like maybe if you see it at 325, I'd be really worried. Besides that, I would definitely uh, just keep holding on to it. Uh, if QD comes back down to VWAP here at $1.96, that could be another, um, you know, possibility. Um, can H here, it, it not looking terrible. I, it's up one dollar. You're looking at maybe a cent and a half stop, so pretty tight stop. Uh, it's moving pretty volatile. It's pretty volatile, so it's kind of hard to play that one. But you could probably make money off that if you're lucky. Um, Eton's not looking too bad. It did have a spike up, so it's getting better. But that's not bad. The one thing I would criticize is that your screens are all different sizes. That hurts my OCD. But besides that, and they're not like flush with each other. But uh, besides that, it looks pretty good. They're all 24 inch? Oh, weird. Oh, this one, the one on the left there looks like it must be an ultra wide 24 inch then. But uh, yeah, it looks, looks good. Definitely enough screens. That's the same amount of screens I have. Oh, it's just zoomed out. Yeah, not bad. Um, ADN's still a possibility. Eye legs probably still a possibility. We just see a drop back down to that $4 mark. Um, but besides that, yeah, God, there goes 10 each. I'll live to 0.46. That would have been a solid, you know, 5 6%. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is the same size. Weird. Yeah, weird. That first picture, they all look like very different sizes. And this one, they all look the same. Weird how camera angles do that. Eton's going for it. Anyways, guys, we're out of time for the day. So, yeah, we made about $3,000 today. Uh, Portfolio is up to just over uh, 12000 We're still aiming for $50,000. we are on the 18th. We have quite a few uh, trading days left. We've got, uh, I don't know, at least nine or so. Um, I won't be here on Friday. I'm going on vacation for the weekend. So I'll be back on Monday. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be missing Friday trading um so yeah good luck on that day if you guys decide to play it yeah no master meeting will be gone the whole weekend but uh yeah be here for the rest of the week guys so i'll catch you guys later take care guys